Well, there's a big uh, U.S. jobs report out. Uh, October openings blew past expectations. They hit levels we haven't seen in months now. Now, if you are a Canadian investor or if you're just someone who's curious about how the U.S. economy impacts us here in Canada, this might be a little bit more relevant than you think. I'm going to break it all down in today's video. I'm going to talk about what it means for your portfolio and for the markets in general. So first off, here's the headlines. Job openings in the U.S. increased by 372,000 in October. That took the total up to 7.744 million. That's up from the 7.372 million we saw in September, well above market expectations of 7.48 million. Now, where's this growth coming from? Well, the biggest gains came from the professional and business services over 200,000 jobs there. Accommodation and food services, 162,000 added, and information was up 87,000. But not everyone's hiring. The federal government actually cut job openings, shedding around 26,000 positions. Now, here's something that I find very interesting. Even though we're seeing this jump in job openings, the actual hiring hasn't moved much. The U.S. saw 5.3 million hires in October. That's essentially the same as we saw in September. Now, total separations, so this includes quits and layoffs. They also stayed pretty flat, 3.3 million and 1.6 million respectively. So what I'm seeing here is a mismatch in the labor market. Employees may be posting jobs, but they're struggling to find workers to fill them with the right skills, or maybe they're just not offering uh, wages that are attractive enough to bring candidates in. So why should Canadian investors care about this U.S. jobs report? Well, the U.S. is Canada's largest trading partner, of course. Strong labor market there usually means good news for Canadian exporters. And if businesses in the U.S. are hiring or at least posting more jobs, that would suggest, that would imply that the demand for goods and services is holding up that could trickle down into industries like manufacturing, natural resources, which would benefit us here in Canada. But there is a flip side to this. If we see this tight U.S. labor market that could keep wages and then inflation, uh, by extension to that, higher for a period uh, longer than what we might like. And if that happens, it'll affect the Federal Reserve's interest rate stance that again could spill over into Canada. Of course, the Bank of Canada is independent, but it often mirrors the Fed's move. It does that to try and maintain the stability of the currency, but that means that we could see these higher rates for longer than we would like on this side of the border too. Now, I will say I'm watching these numbers here with a bit of mixed feelings. On one hand, the increase in the job openings, that's a sign that there are parts of the U.S. economy that are still growing, especially we're seeing that in services and in tech. That's good news for these sectors that rely uh, strongly or rely on strong customer demand. But the flat hiring numbers, that really makes me wonder, are we headed towards a, a labor market that looks good only on paper, uh, but really in reality struggles to deliver any real gains? And for us here in Canada, this uncertainty just adds another level of complexity if the U.S. inflation sticks around, and we've already seen those in recent inflation numbers that have come out, our portfolios then could feel a bit of a pinch, especially if we're looking at interest-sensitive sectors like real estate or utilities. It could also, could it will also impact the Canadian dollar, which tends to weaken when U.S. rates stay higher for longer. We've seen that recently as well. So looking ahead, um, if these job openings do translate into actual hires, it could signal sustained growth. That's a good thing. But if hiring stays flat, then it might point to deeper inefficiencies in the labor market overall, and that could eventually cool economic activity. I am very curious, do you have an opinion on this? Um, as a Canadian investor, are you feeling optimistic or cautious about how this might affect your portfolio? Let me know in the comments below. A lot of investors these days are looking for a combination of reliable monthly income still with the potential for growth. And I would like to introduce you to the Harvest Diversified Monthly Income ETF. Ticker is HDIF on the TSX. And this is your one-stop solution for consistent high-income cash distributions. Now, HDIF, it offers access to leading large-cap companies across sectors like healthcare, technology, and utilities, delivering diversity and stability in one portfolio. And the fund uses an active covered call strategy to enhance income while also reducing volatility. It also employs a modest leverage of approximately 25%, so HDIF will amplify both income and potential growth. As of October 31st, the fund has an impressive 10.23% yield, which is paid out in monthly distributions. So whether you're planning for retirement or looking to grow your wealth, HDIF might be just what you're looking for. You can visit harvestportfolios.com HDIF to learn more. I will put a link in the description of this video. 
It's earnings week for the banks and three of the big six have reported so far this week. I'm going to cover in this video some quick highlights here. I do plan a more comprehensive report next week. So I want to start first off here with the Royal Bank. They've reported a 17.7 increase in adjusted net income for the fourth quarter. This translates into earnings per share of $3.07. That's slightly above analyst expectations. The recent $10 billion acquisition of HSBC's Canadian operations had a big impact um, on RBC's retail and commercial banking sector that added approximately 780,000 clients and it expanded both their mortgage and corporate loan portfolios. In the wealth management division, they saw a substantial growth. They had net income uh, more than the triple at $969 million, and that was driven by increased fees and a recovery from previous impaired losses. So that's some good news, but even with this positive results that we've seen here, RBC still allocated $840 million for potential loan defaults, and that is a clear reflection on some ongoing pressures uh, by consumers. Now, next up, we saw Scotiabank report a fourth quarter profit of $1.7 six nine billion dollars that's up from 1.35 billion in the same period last year and this increase is partly due to a reduction in provisions for credit losses that's something we're not seeing much uh, these days those fell to 1.03 billion down from 1.26 billion a year earlier the bank's revenue from the quarter that rose to $8.53 billion. That compares with $8.27 billion the previous year. And adjusted earnings per share were $1.57. That was slightly below analyst expectations of $1.60. Now, Scotiabank CEO Scott Thompson, he noted that 2024 was a foundational year, he's calling it for the bank. And he highlighted a solid revenue growth and positive full year operating leverage. The bank's Canadian banking division saw a 34% increase in earnings, while international banking saw a 14% rise. Now, all that said, though, global banking and markets reported a 3% decline in income. I will be back when the rest of the major banks have reported with more information for you. In November, the Greater Toronto Area, GTA, a housing market saw a big boost. Home sales were up 40% compared to the same month last year, and that totaled 5,875 transactions. And I guess this is some good news here, depending what side of the fence you're on, but this is now the fourth consecutive month of increased sales. And that is a trend that we can attribute mostly to the recent rate cuts by the Bank of Canada, which have made borrowing more affordable uh, for potential buyers. Now, the average selling price in the GTA climbed to to $1,106,050. That's a 2.6% increase from November 2023. And the rise in prices is accompanied by a 6.6% increase in new listings. That brings the total to 11,592 for the month. But even with this increase in listings, demand is continuing to outpace supply, and that's leading to these tighter market conditions. Now, Jennifer Pierce, she's the president of the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board, and she noted that a lot of buyers had been waiting uh, for reduced inflation and lower borrowing costs before they had been entering the market. And she said, as we approach the end of 2024, I'm pleased to report an improvement in housing market conditions. Many home buyers patiently waited on the sidelines for reduced inflation and lower borrowing costs. She went on to say, with selling prices remaining well off their historic peak and monthly mortgage payments trending lower, the stage is set for an accelerating market recovery in 2025. Another side effect that we're seeing of the Canada Post strike, the U.S. Postal Service, or the USPS, they have now temporarily stopped accepting mail that's destined for Canada. And this decision, which was effective November 29th, um, it comes in response to the ongoing strike here by approximately 55,000 members of the Canadian Union of Postal Workers that began back on November the 15th. The suspension impacts multiple service. This includes the Priority Mail Express International, Priority Mail International, and First Class Mail International. Now, the USPS is advising its customers to hold off uh, from sending articles to Canada until further notice. The Postal Service says that it is closely monitoring the situation and will continue to update customers until the situation returns to normal. Now, for Canada Post part, it has informed the USPS that it cannot process or deliver international mail due to the strike. As a result of this, mail sent to Canada is being held in secure containers and has not been processed. So for any USPS customers who have recently mailed items to Canada, you should expect delays. And those of you who have urgent mailing needs, you're encouraged to explore alternative carriers. That is a wrap for the program today. Don't forget to subscribe for the Pulse newsletter. That comes out on the weekends. So a few days, you'll have the next version of that out. As always, I thank you for watching this and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.